Dennis Province from the IDEA National Resource for Quantitative Proteomics with part two of Fundamentals of Proteomics. This is a short um, stream of consciousness sort of course about different aspects of proteomics and today we're going to be talking about uh, properties of peptides. So uh, peptides um, are made up of amino acids that are linked together through um, uh, a bond that uh, allows each amino acid's uh, true character to stay uh, intact, uh, which we call the R group. Um, this particular slide shows that if you take the word peptide, actually each uh, of the different 20 amino acids uh, are represented by a different letter. And so each of those letters, P, E, P, T, I, D, E, actually um, could be a peptide chain, a amino acid chain, uh, with a proline, um, glutamic acid, proline, threonine, isoleucine, aspartic acid, and glucine, uh, glutamic acid again on the end, uh, making this a uh, the molecule that you see uh, there on the left, and the picture representation of the carbon backbone in uh, green, and the oxygens in red, and the nitrogens in uh, blue. So we think of amino acids like, uh, like pearls, and then a peptide is really a link of uh, those pearls together on a chain through that, uh, through that backbone, um, that amide backbone that we're going to talk about just briefly. And then the difference between a peptide and a protein is that a peptide is really just a small piece of protein. A protein is going to have more structure. It can be linked together. Uh, different amino acids uh, can be linked and there can be more structure there. Um, so amino acids are really, there are 20 essential uh, amino acids and these are the essential means they're coded by our genetic code uh, coming from our DNA and they can be linked together through this amide bond. As can be seen here, you've got the um, amino acid because you have the amine group on one side and you have the carboxylic uh, group on the other side, and when you link those two together to what we call alpha amino acids, because that carbon in the middle is considered the alpha carbon, and then you would have uh, a carboxylic acid group on one side, an amine group on the other side, and through uh, this uh, this little chemistry here that causes a water molecule to to uh, uh, to be the product, you have a new bond form which is called an amide or a peptide bond. And so where you have two amino acids, now you have one dipeptide. And the uh, overall charge of this uh, can depend upon the pH. So you might notice that it, these uh, alpha amino acids that are listed here look a little weird in that they have both a positive and negative charge on the same molecule. That's called a Zwitter ion. And that's because at physiological pH, uh, that's, the, that's the state in which uh, you see those. Those um, amine groups um, uh, can accept protons, and uh, the carboxylic acid um, group can donate protons. And so you end up with that positive and negative charge uh, on them, respectively. So those 20 amino acids, um, a lot of times this is a... Uh, um, something that you have to memorize in uh, a, a basic uh, biochemistry class. Um, the structure, uh, they, they have uh, a code that's a single letter. Uh, for instance, alanine is A and glycine is G, etc. Um, and also there's a three-letter code. So alanine could also be ALA and glycine can be GLY. And really the this, this same um, uh, structure is, or the structure is the same for all the amino acids except for the, uh, or pretty much the same except for that that fourth group. If I were to go back a slide here, that what we call the R or the side chain there in red is the only thing that's really different between all the different amino acids. So if you look here, um, uh, alanine is just going to have a, a CH3 group uh, hanging off of that. Um, alpha carbon and glycine is going to have just hydrogen and then isoleucine has this uh, uh, isoalkyl uh, group hanging off of their 
etc., etc. And you can see there's different colored circles there because some of these amino acids have different properties based upon that R group. So you have uh, some of these are uh, aliphatic, um, so this is mostly hydrocarbons, and some are aromatic, they have rings. Some are acidic, um, the aspartic acid, the glutamic acid, because they have uh, that R group is um, has a carboxylic acid group. Some are basic, those are the ones with the, the blue circle around there, and that would be arginine, histidine, uh, and lysine, and those are very important. We'll talk about more of those in just a minute. And, uh, and then you have other uh, sulfur-containing groups like cysteine and methionine, and those are interesting because those cysteines can link to other cysteines to create cross-linking uh, within a protein to um, provide even more structure. So uh, the ones that we're interested in, though, are for, for mass spectrometry are the uh, side chains of amino acids that can accept protons, and those are called basic amino acids, and that would be the lysine, the arginine, and the histidine. So a peptide, when you make a peptide from amino acids, really it's just a repeating unit. So we saw the chemistry where you can take two pro, uh, two amino acids and put them together to make a dipeptide. Well, you can just continue to do that, and so this is an example of a a tetrapeptide or a polypeptide chain that now has four amino acids and you'll notice that we have a N terminal on one side that is the amine group um, uh, and then on the other side you have what we call the C terminus or C end carbon end and that has a carboxylic acid uh, in the, over there and so then really the chemistry or the interesting thing about the, the, the peptide which causes the different function of it uh, is going to be what the what the identity of those R groups are. So what the, are the amino acids that make up that particular uh, peptide? So we want to talk more specifically in mass spectrometry in our shotgun or global proteomics uh, about tryptic peptides. So trypsin is this amazing uh, enzyme that is uh, is a will cleave or, or cut uh, these amide bonds at very particular places. So um, peptides that have been formed um, by taking proteins and exposing them to trypsin are called tryptic peptides. So these peptides um, are cleaved on the, on the carbon side of the lysine or, or, and arginine. And, and that's, it is very, um, it's very efficient. It uh, cleaves almost every arginine, at every arginine and lysine, and it also doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So it doesn't cleave uh, at very many other places. This makes uh, this makes uh, a huge difference for mass spectrometry because we can now predict what kind of uh, peptides that we would expect to find if we have uh, used trypsin to do our cleavage. And so you can see for this peptide sequence, which uh, is just represented by a series of a one letter uh, code here, um, R, L, V, K, E, et cetera, that if we were to expose that, that peptide or that protein to a trypsin, it would cleave and form a small fragment that's just the arginine. And then the next one would be that tripeptide uh, with um, uh, a leucine and valine and uh, lysine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll notice that the the very right end of every one of those peptides is gonna, either going to have an arginine or a lysine because that is where um, trypsin cleaves or cuts. So what's so important um, about the chemistry of the tryptic peptides? Well, we can exploit uh, the fact that every one of our peptides that we form um, is going to have a arginine or a lysine on it. So every peptide has an amine end on one end, which can be protonated at low pH to, to, to have a charge. So now it's uh, an NH3 plus or uh, an ammonium ion there. And then every triptych peptide has at least one basic residue, either the lysine or the arginine, uh, will be at the C terminal, and that can also be protonated at low pH. And the reason why, and I have uh, put the structures for uh, this first one is lysine, uh, the middle one is arginine, and the last one is histidine. Those are the three basic 
um, uh, amino acids that we have here. And you can see in blue, those uh, the, the side chains are the all the parts hanging off to the right there. And you can see in blue the nitrogens, uh, the amine groups. And those are the ones that can, uh, when exposed to low pH, can uh, are proton acceptors and will carry an extra charge. So we exploit the fact that most triptic peptides have a charge of plus two or greater. And this is a, a really big benefit because the mass spectrometer can now go through and quickly decide whether a, uh, an ion is a peptide or just a contaminant based upon its charge. Usually we don't have a lot of plus one uh, charged peptides, triptych peptides, and so we can exclude all plus one charged ions. That means we don't have to spend our time trying to fragment and sequence um, ions that are not actually peptides. Well, how do we identify each peptide? Well, uh, we get a couple of different pieces of information. Number one, the total mass to charge of the peptide. Um, and also we can fragment, uh, we can get fragmentation spectra of each of those peptides. We use do that by using what's called collision-induced dissociation. So uh, basically uh, you can take a peptide and you can hit it with some energy and that's done in various ways. Uh, hitting it with some energetic gas um, can, can be, do the trick and given it a, the right amount of energy it causes the peptide to fragment and it fragments in a way that's very reproducible and the most abundant fragments uh, fragment along the peptide backbone. And so what I have written here is this is a peptide sequence, the V, G, V, N, G, F, uh, G, R is, is a peptide sequence uh, going from the N terminal here on the left hand side and the C terminal over there on the right hand side. And these numbers that you see above there are the masses of uh, that you would find if you were to fragment this particular peptide along the backbone. And so I have this red line drawn here that shows a place where it's fragmented. Um, that if it fragments between the glycine and the valine there, then you would end up with one fragment that would have a mass to charge ratio of 157.1. And then the other fragment would have a mass of 649.3. And you can see that you could fragment at all of those different places along the backbone to get different charges. So the, the triptych peptides are ideal for this uh, collision-induced association. So the fragmentation breaks the amide bond so that the CID spectra, this is what you're looking here in this slide, the spectra is predictable and the expected fragment ions can be calculated. So if I were to take this information over here and I were to put it on a graph, uh, you might look something like this. Now the difference between the red and the blue is that the blue uh, would be the Y ions and that would be the ions that are formed from the C terminal. So that means the charge is, is, was, was kept on the C terminal end. Uh, the B ions would be those that are coming from the, the N terminal end. And you can see the different colors uh, there um, representing the different mass to charges that you can see of these two different series that we see there. So that's not the end of the story. So this is um, this would be what it would look like if um, all of the um, fragments were equally um, uh, plausible um, to form. But some of these fragments, uh, when you take a peptide and you fragment it, some fragments are, are more abundant and other fragments are less abundant. And it has to do with uh, stability and the strength of the bond. There's a lot of chemistry going on there. And so this is uh, the actual fragmentation spectra, the CID, of this particular guy. And you can see that we have uh, these guys line up, but you can tell that there's different um, some of these ions are much more abundant and others are much less abundant. And you can see some general trends here that uh, we can use. And you can see that there's some, so there's some real characteristic peaks here that, that line up here at the higher mass to charge end. And then you see a lot of much smaller 
uh, signals here in the spectra down here at the, at the bottom end. And so most of the time we would pay more attention to the, um, the information um, away from the, the smaller or massive charge uh, end because that is more um, dependable. But that is this spectra right here represents this is what this is the fingerprint of that peptide sequence. And so that information can then be stored in a computer uh, by the mass to charge of each one of these fragments, as well as the uh, relative intensities of these guys. And then it can look for that. And every time it sees that pattern or very similar to that pattern, it uh, can make some sort of judgment as to whether it thinks it's that um, peptide or not. Okay, well, we're done for today. Um, other topics uh, will include uh, using a database, um, do some specifics on sample prep, and converting chemical energy into digital en energy, uh, chemical information into digital information. Thank you.